Who am I? Am I an immigration lawyer? No, I'm not. Do I have a consultancy office in India or Canada? No, I don't. So who am I? I'm a proud citizen of India and a joyous permanent resident of Canada. I got my permanent residency status in 2017, after which I moved to Kitchener-Waterloo, the twin cities of Ontario, Canada. I'm an IT professional working for a MNC and I'm 18 years old. 18 till I die. 18 till I die. Yes, I'm always gonna be 18 till I die. Okay, now before I tell you my immigration story, I want to tell you a little more about myself. I was born and brought up in Kanpur, Uttar Pradesh, where I completed my schooling. Yes, I am that UP Gachora. After that, I moved to Agra, the land of Taj Mahal, where I completed my engineering in electronics and instrumentation stream. Now, why I'm telling you that? Because this fact has got a very important role to play in my immigration story. This is a decade old pick, and if you're trying to find me, then here I was, in the middle of nowhere. No idea of what to do with my life after engineering. I was always fascinated by big cities and Delhi, the capital of India, was the closest metro city from Agra. I always loved the city. So after completing studies, I moved to New Delhi where my job hunting started very soon. My sister was well settled here, so with her, it wasn't much difficult for me. I was fortunate enough to find a job very soon and I joined one of India's most reputed IT MNC as a software tester. After three years of working for a UK client, I built another big dream. I started dreaming of an on-site opportunity to London at a client's office. Unfortunately, this opportunity kept slipping from my hands. An issue with the reissuance of my passport, then visa rules getting changed every now and then. It was just not happening for me. It was a really frustrating time. My friends suggested me to switch the organization, but I persisted, worked hard, and finally, after a year or so, my wishes were heard. And I got my visa stamped. I was in seventh heaven. April 2015, my London dream finally came true and I moved to London for a year. I lived every moment of that time thinking that after one year I would go back and settle down in Delhi, my used to be favorite city. But never knew that this one year would be the turning point in my life. It filled me with confidence like never before. It completely changed the way I used to think and it also changed my future plans for sure. I always loved traveling and now I got to travel all around Europe. I traveled to the city I always wanted to visit, Paris, and absolutely loved the view from the top of the Eiffel Tower. I traveled to several places in Italy and Vatican City. I also traveled to Prague, the city that I only heard about in a Bollywood movie. I also traveled to the naughty Amsterdam, the land of Waffles, Belgium, and the birthplace of my favorite beer, Dublin, Ireland. Because that was not enough, I went for a solo trip, firstly to Barcelona, only to fall in love with Spain, many places in the mesmerizing Switzerland, and finally, the last stop was Berlin. And how I can forget UK's own Wales and the beautiful Scotland. By now, I started loving the European lifestyle and Western culture. The most carefree year of my life was spent with a blink of an eye and I returned back to India. As I loved that feeling of solo trips, after coming back, I decided to explore Asia and made solo trips to Malaysia and Thailand but only to realize that it is too expensive to travel with my Indian salary. Just then, I decided that I don't want these one-year on-site terms, but a permanent settlement in such countries. 
I decided I wanted to settle abroad. So here it is. Now begins my immigration story to Canada. Back in 2016, I was totally kind of noob when it came to the knowledge of immigration. So I discussed it with my sister who was working in Saudi Arabia those days. She suggested me the options of permanent residency for Australia or Canada. I was totally unaware of the process apart from the fact that we have to clear IELTS test for it. That's it. Yes, that was me two and a half years ago. I contacted a consultant and asked for an advice. Which one should I choose, Australia or Canada? Looking at my profile, he suggested Australia. Much later, I realized he was a consultant only for Australia, so he suggested that. Anyways, I immediately started preparing for IELTS. I had to get 7 bands in each section to get 10 points for English test. I started getting help from my sister who was a professional IELTS trainer. I got 6.5 bands in the writing section so I had to appear for IELTS again but this time I was able to get the required bands. I paid the money to the consultant to initiate my Australian PR process. I also cleared the skill assessment of ACS. After this, he said that rules have changed and as my field of education was electronics while I was working in IT, I won't be able to get the required points for eligibility. It was a big shock for me. Now I needed to get 8 bands in each section of IELTS to score 10 extra points and become eligible again. I knew my capabilities and how much practice it took to get 7 band in lighting and speaking section. That consultant misguided me a number of times. How he did that I'll tell you in a separate video. I was not at all happy with his services. By now I had already spent around 1.5 lakh rupees in skill assessment, IELTS and their consultancy fee. But the hope of getting Australian PR was only getting thinner. I was losing hope and almost gave up on my dream of settling abroad. In February 2017, a friend told me about Express Entry of Canada. Instead of researching about the process, I googled to find another consultant in Delhi, this time for Canadian immigration. She calculated my score and suggested me to start the process ASAP. Right there, I paid around 80,000 as the consultancy fee and thought my process has started. How silly was I back then? I got the checklist of documents and transcript was the first one. After sending it across, I got my ECA through WES in about a month's time. I used my old IELTS score that I got for Australia, now for Canada. In April, my Express Entry profile was created. My CRS score was 432. That time the cutoff score was at its lowest so I easily got ITA in the very next row. I consider myself really really lucky for this. I struggled collecting some documents, especially the reference letter, but somehow managed to get it and submitted my application in June 2017 and received the golden mail in just two and a half months time in the last of August. In the meanwhile, my sister also got interested to move to Canada. I recommended her the same consultant as I had good experience with them. On the contrary, her experience with the same consultancy was a nightmare. They messed up so badly with her application that after even getting the ITA, she almost lost hope to get the PR. As I was well aware of the entire process now, I helped her in every step and she got the PR astonishingly in just 21 days. Can you believe it? 21 business days. That's it. I somehow also managed to get an internal transfer within my organization as it had clients in Canada as well and moved to Ontario in October 2017. Last winters were harsh, but I kind of enjoyed them. Now, when I posted this on my Facebook profile with around 800 friends, so many of them started asking me if I got the Canadian PR and about the process. 
Due to the time difference, I used to talk to them over the weekends for the first two three months. I must admit that I was really dumb with the immigration process before I started, but during the application process, I researched a lot only to realize that the express entry process is so simple. I felt like I wasted so much money to the consultants. Could I have done it on my own? Having been through both of them, I had the knowledge of both Australia and Canadian PR process by now. Apart from my sister, I helped two of my friends at every step and they also got the Canadian PR in April without the help of any consultancy. I gained a lot of knowledge and somewhat experience by then. I was checking YouTube one day and found that this knowledge is very limited and confined to videos from consultants who would request people to visit them towards the last of every video. I thought just like my friends, there must be other people out there who don't have the basic knowledge of this process. So I made this YouTube channel and this video, declared it on my Facebook page. After that continuously made videos, researched and made more videos and spread the knowledge. I don't want people to do the mistakes that I did. I don't want people to waste money with the consultants if they can do it on their own. I made this dream abroad YouTube channel and rest is history. So this was how I landed in Canada. I thought I would choose my country. I thought I would choose between Australia and Canada. But instead, it seems Canada chose me.